Well, welcome, guys. Welcome to a new Let's Play. Now, this is, of course, Pikmin. So, this was one of the very first video, uh, this was one of the very first games that was released for the Nintendo GameCube when it first came out. And, admittedly, I didn't have it at first. It wasn't until several years later that I, I would actually get this game. I didn't think much of it at the time, but it's actually a pretty decent game. Alright, let's look at the options real quick. Alright, so let's get started. Now my old cells save files are gone, unfortunately, but that's alright. So let's go ahead and start a new ship log. Now this is Captain Olimar. One day he was just traveling through the vastness of space, just seeing what he could find. When unfortunately for him, his rocket ship was struck by a meteorite, or an asteroid, I should say, and it caused the ship to crash into the planet below. Which looks kind of similar to planet Earth, actually. Just a little, though. As you can see, his ship is breaking up into many different parts there. Scattering all across the globe. So yes, welcome to the impact site. Snap out of it, Captain. We've got work to do. My name is Captain Olimar. While traveling through space, my ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out and I awoke on the surface of a weird planet. With so many parts lost, the skeletal hull of my beloved dolphin is a painful sight. The engine is gone. I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my atmospheric sensors indicate the planet's envir environment contains high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for only 30 days. If I can't repair the dolphin by then, no. Better not to think about it. I must find the missing ship parts. So yes, he's crash landed here on this strange planet. And it's going to be up to us to find all of his ship parts within 30 days. Otherwise, he's going to run out of oxygen. Well, let's look around a little bit. He can't do much. He can punch, but it doesn't really do much damage. But he also has a whistle, which is kind of strange. Now what's this thing over here? Whoa. It sprung to life the moment we got close. Huh. A strange thing has appeared before me. I had barely begun my search when it reared up as if it were waiting for me. Then dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it a machine? It resembles a vegetable on my home planet that we call an onion. I shall call this an onion, too. Now, if we wait just a moment... There it is! It sprouted! The seed that the onion dropped took, took root in the soil and, and has now produced an adorable little sprout. The sprout emits a strange light and it sways back and forth without benefit of wind. I cannot help but think it is calling to me. I am compelled. I must approach it and press A. Oh! Hello there, little guy. So this is a Pikmin. Extraordinary. When I plucked the sprout, it turned out to be a living creature, not a plant. Picking it has done no visible damage. It just stands there staring at me. Its shape is similar to the Pik Pik brand carrots I love so much. I believe I shall call it a Pikmin. Here I am, stranded on a toxic planet, fighting to survive, and yet I'm intrigued. I must research this fascinating creature. I shall try to grab it and throw it with A, and I shall call it to my side with B. Hmm, perhaps it will react to C and X as well. Alright, so these are just the controls. 
I must survive. I need to familiar familiarize myself with these controls in my surroundings. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Not... We'll send the camera back, because it's easier to see a wider area at this range. And what you can do is, you can toss a Pikmin with A if he's following you. And then when he goes gray like that, he's waiting for your command. So push B, or to walk into him to call him back to your side. Now what we'll do here is, we'll have to toss him onto this plant thing. And pick this thing up. Now, if you have a Pikmin, grab one of those and bring it back to the onion, it'll sprout more Pikmin from it. If the color matches the color of the onion, then you'll get more seeds from it. So if it's a, a number one th uh, seed thing and you bring it to the onion and it's also red, then you'll get two Pikmin from it. Astonishing, the onion has sown more seeds. The small red pellet the Pikmin harvested after cutting it on a flower appears to be some type of food that can propagate more Pikmin. The onion seems to be a sort of incubator. Needless to, needless to say, I must study the strange life for more. Now, I believe these flowers are called candy pop buds, if I'm not mistaken. Go on, pick it up. You can also move your Pikmin around by using the sea stick for the record. So yeah, bring more pellets to the onion, and you'll make more and more Pikmin. Come on, pop up. There they are. Also, if you just mash A repeatedly, you can- Olimar will automatically go to any nearby Pikmin that are in the ground, and he'll pluck them. That way you don't have to just go to each one of them individually. Now notice how this pellet here has a 5 on it. That means we need 5 Pikmin in order to pick it up. But yeah, always look for the number associated with the item- the, ob the items or objects you need to pick up. That usually shows you how many of the Pikmin are needed in order to carry it. So that'll produce a lot of Pikmin. Come on, boys, we got more work to do. So go ahead and bring back to bring that back to your onion, and I believe there's one more up here on the hill. that one. And I think that's the last of them in this area, at least. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any more. At least in the immediate vicinity. Now, notice in the upper right corner of the screen how it says day one. Normally, you, you have a time limit in these stages that uh, generally is about 15 minutes long in real time. You have that, you have 50, generally around 15 minutes in a stage before Captain Polymer has to retreat for the night. Now for this first day, we actually have unlimited time, so it's mainly because it's a tutorial and it's getting you used to the controls and stuff. Alright, so we have a huge box in our way here. Now that we have over 10 Pikmin, we can push it. Good job, guys! The Pikmin are as curious as children. They form groups to perform tasks that would be impossible for an individual. A glimmer of hope has begun to shine in my heart. If I can make use of their skills, perhaps I can fix my ship. I shall sum up all I've learned of Pikmin conduct. Alright, so we already know how to do all this. Now that right there is our very first rocket ship part, but we're not going to pick it up just yet. Because once it's brought back to the ship, then the day automatically ends, and we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that to happen just yet. I can talk, I swear. Since we have unlimited time, we might as well build up our army as much as we can f since, we have un uh, since we have unlimited time at the moment. So we'll go ahead and bring all these pellets back to the Red Onion. 
Also, if you put more than the required amount of Pikmin on, on an object to carry it, then they'll carry it faster for you. Which I think is pretty cool. Yo, on, you're almost there. Yep, good job. Alright, once we pluck these guys out of the ground, we'll go ahead and collect the shape the spaceship part. Many Pikmin seed, when many Pikmin seeds, seeds sprout at once, I find it rather tedious to pluck them from the ground individually. My wife always told me I was no good at routine tasks. I guess I'll try to get it all done at once by repeatedly tapping it. Yes, we already knew that all. I've noticed that when I add Pikmin, Pikmin to my group, they become filled with excitement and flushed with bright color. At other, other, at other times, they revert to a paler hue and give, give off a dim glow. Paying close attention to these differences is bound to help me dis distinguish between Pikmin. Yeah, so you'll notice how that guy that I just tossed is glowing dim. It's because he's awaiting orders to be to move again. Alright, I don't think there's any more pellets that we can bring back to the onion, so let's get that ship part. So this is the engine. Amazing. There's no mistaking it. My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I have already stumbled upon the most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but how will I get it back to the dolphin? Oh, I don't know. Maybe by using the Pikmin? Okay, we got all 25 of my Red Army there helping out. Sounds wrong, Red Army. But yeah, once they bring the ship part back to the ship, then the day will automatically end. So make sure you just do everything you can here before you end the day. Come on now, chop chop. We haven't got all day. Alright. It looks slightly better, I guess. Oh, glorious. With the help of these Pikmin, I've taken a huge step back toward home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning to burn more brightly. But what has become of my remaining parts? That search starts tomorrow. So yeah, at the end of the day, always make sure to either send your Pikmin home, or make sure they're with Captain Oliver before the before the day ends. That way they don't get left behind. You definitely don't want any Pikmin to be left behind in the dark. Who knows what could happen to them. One day since impact, I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lift off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface, or have they merely decided to join me for other reasons? Either way, it seems they will help me again tomorrow. The dolphin is missing 29 parts. If I can't recover them all, I may never return home to my planet, to my family on planet Hokotate. Analysis in shows life support systems will function for only 29 more days. How can I repair my dolphin in such a short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below. As it holds the keys to my survival, I name it the Forest of Hope. I explore it tomorrow. Oh, also, as a, just as an interesting side note, I said this in Donkey Kong 64 as well, but the dolphin was the 
um, experimental name for the GameCube before it was known as the GameCube. It was called Dolphin. So that's interesting. Alright, I guess we'll save. Let's move on to day two. Alright, so there's not much else we can do at the impact site at the moment. So for now, we're gonna head to this new area, the Forest of Hope. Let's land. The Forest of Hope. My dolphin has returned to the surface along with the Pikmin's onion. Being alone on this strange planet makes me somewhat uneasy, so I shall call the Pikmin out of the onion. All I need to do is stand in the light beneath the onion and press A. Okay then. Right, that one will leave right there. Let's pluck this grass over here. Because this produces some weird nectar. Another intriguing discovery. The local variety of grass produces a sort of yellow nectar. When the Pikmin drink this delicacy, they instantly mature into flowers. This apparent Pikmin favorite seems to be full of nutrition. Closer observation is needed to determine the strengths and pe peculiarities of these flower Pikmin. But yeah, there's basically free... Uh, there's three forms to these Pikmin, which I'll explain in just a moment. There's Leaf Pikmin, which are the basic ones. There's the bud, where they mature a little bit, and then they finally turn into a flower. Now, when you have Flower Pikmin, they're actually faster, and they're also a little bit stronger than regular Pikmin. So always try to make an army of Flower Pikmin if you're able to. Now, what we need to do is have our army break down the store. It's gonna take a while with so few Pikmin, but they'll destroy it eventually. I'd help if I can, but Polymer's not very strong on his own. Now you'll notice that there's a creature in front of us in this area. I forget what its actual name is, but it's... It's not a Bulb Orb, I know that much, but... I think it's called a Bread Bug, if I'm not mistaken? They look like Bulborbs, but they're not actually related. But because they look alike, the Bulborbs leave them alone, so they stick to them so that they fend off other predators, I think. Alright, let's take these things out. Him. Did you hurt me? But yeah, any enemies that the Pikmin fell in battle, you can bring them back to the Onion and make more Pikmin with them as well, like you would with a seed. Leave the yellow ones alone, alone, but we'll go for the reds. Yeah, um, you'll notice that there's a, a, a sun meter in the in the top corner of the screen now. That represents how much time you have left in a stage. Generally, you have around 15 minutes before you have to take off for the day. So just keep that in mind when you're going through the stages. That's, that's your time limit. But yeah, it's interesting to note that whenever you bring the same colored pellet to the, the same colored onion, you'll get double the amount of of Pikmin that you would from it. So since that one was 10, we got 20 red Pikmin from it since it was the same color.
over here. Let's see if we can get some more flower. Oh, we even have an extra. Nice. Let's go, team. Let's take out these bread bugs. Pretty sure that's what they're called anyway. Ooh, another ship part. Why, it's the Eternal Fuel Dynamo. It has an unlimited energy supply. I won't have to worry about saving electricity anymore. This will make my fight for survival a bit easier. So we need at least 40 Pikmin to be able to pick that up. Now that thing over there is a bull warp, and those things are dangerous. We're gonna have to wait till everyone's back before we take it on. Fuel Dynamo is back. This should light things up. No more candles for me. I now have two of the fairy parts. If I can just find three more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. Alright, no time to celebrate. We got a bull borb that we have to fight. Now these things are scary. Okay, we got him. Surprisingly, we did that with no casualties, so that's nice. Let's, let's wait till we have the rest of the team back. But yeah, um, if we leave these Pikmin that are currently in the ground and just leave them there for a while, eventually they'll start sprouting on their own rather than needing nectar to do it. My clock has indicated the coming of noon. From now on, I, mis I must pay close attention to the sun meter on my monitor and choose my actions accordingly. So let's review the monitor's data. Across the top of my monitor are the sun meter and day display. At the bottom are my space suit damage meter and Pikmin gauges. From the left, these numbers reflect Pikmin under my command, Pikmin in the field, and total Pikmin. To adjust my monitor, blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay. Alright, we need to destroy that gate. But yeah, the more flower Pikmin you carry around with, with you, the stronger your army will be. So try to get as many flower Pikmin as you can. there. Okay, 
Okay, good. Let's take out the bread bug. Okay, good job. But now we fight another bull warp. All right, we got him. Now, you'll notice over here, there's another uh, Pikmin onion. And this one's colored yellow. So time to meet the yellow Pikmin. Also, for the record, if you hit the X button, you'll separate your Pikmin into ranks and color, so that way you can pick them out easily. Hey there, little fella! The color is different, but it seems to be a Pikmin nonetheless. First glance suggests this one ha has what in some circles could be considered very large ears. It looks like it may weigh, weigh less than the others. In what other ways might it be different from the reds? No matter, they are obviously quite similar, so I shall call this one a Pikmin as well. Alright, so let's start making Yellow Pikmin. Now, because the Yellow Pikmin are lighter, that also means that they're a tiny bit weaker. But it also means that you can toss them higher, and you can also toss them further. Yeah, man. Chop, chop. Let's make some more Yellow Pikmin. I have met, made yet another Pikmin-related discovery. And that just when I was about to exceed 100 Pikmin in the field, the onions stopped expelling seeds, yet the total number of Pikmin continued to climb. It seems that once there are 100 Pikmin in the field, subsequent seeds get stored in the onion. Thus, no more, no more than 100 Pikmin can be in the field at any one time. Alright, so we have a few yellow Pikmin now. Now the interesting thing about yellow Pikmin, they can pick up these rocks. The yellow Pikmin have picked up some peculiar stones. Why did they decide to grab them? This action seems to be instinctive to the yellow Pikmin, but just what are these strange glowing stones? Brightly glowing cracks cover them. Perhaps these cracks indicate that there's tremendous power locked away within. This merits further research. Now these are actually bomb rocks. No, don't attack it. That's just silly. What we need to do is toss a Pikmin carrying a bomb rock. Let it blow up. The glowing rocks the yellow Pikmin picked up seem to be explosive stones. Perhaps they know that these stones can be used as powerful weapons. The bomb rocks are dangerous, so I must take care when using them, but they should be able to blast open the stone walls that block the pathways. I may be even be able to use them against some of the wild creatures. I must be vigilant. Pikmin I dismiss by pressing X bring their bombs when I call them back. Pikmin I throw, press A, drop their bombs when I call them. Can clear the explosion. When I touch them directly, they keep their bombs and fall in line. And that's how you destroy the stone balls.
now. Gotcha. So that's one less bulb orb to worry about. Make some more yellow pigment. I think that'll be a good idea. Now let's pick up a couple more bomb rocks. blow up in this wall behind the rocket. My clock is indicating the approach of sunset. Pikmin, Pikmin waiting beneath the dolphin and onions will probably enter the onions on their own, but I, if I don't call the stragglers and add them to my group, they may not be able to get back. I am sure that the Pikmin still planted are safe, but I am somewhat concerned about leaving Pikmin to fend for themselves in the darkness. Let's go get those stragglers that I left behind. Yeah, any stragglers that are either in the ground or near one of the onions will be safe when darkness comes if you don't send them back into the onion. Anyone, anyone else that's not close to your ship or, or the onions, though, and you risk them getting eaten. Like, these guys I'm probably just gonna leave there for now. Just so that they can sprout more. But they'll be fine. Okay, end of day. out of here. <laughs> Goodbye, Bulb Orbs. It appears that many of my ship's parts have landed in this region. If I can just recover the parts of my radar, I should be able to use my radar screen. How that would improve my chances. Then I'd only have to press Y to locate my parts. Yet, there seem to be many hostile life forms here. If I am attacked and my spacesuit takes damage, I must return to my ship, stand in front of it, and press A to make repairs. As I explore, I must pay attention to my suit's damage meter in the bottom left corner. Alright, so we sprouted 102 today, and we haven't lost any in battle yet, so we're doing pretty good.